Why is your Coke Zero triple sleeved? Uh, cause I'm drinking straight mud, brother. You know how it is, it's Wednesday, bro, it's hump day. I think I want this. And then I think I wish to re-roll. And then I don't wanna see that item ever again as long as I live. That's tight, my boy. My publicist is in my ear. Please do not encourage your audience to drink lean. Okay, I have to say, you should not add, I don't even know, is lean is, is cough syrup plus what? Plus Sprite? What, can you add like, can you use Starry instead? Me at the lean restaurant. Can I actually get that with Sierra Mist? Oh, sorry, we only carry Coke products here. Oh, all right, I'll just have uh, water then. Sometimes they also put Jolly Ranchers in it. Yeah, I don't think I'm about that lifestyle, but... You know, if Nick Saban wants... He's obviously been very successful, so if he wants to stay in the lane, swerving, screaming YOLO, triple-sleeved, slurping that straight mud, by all means. Well, not by all means. He should be in prison. He should do that at home safely, but... I'm just saying, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how he's living his life. I think he's probably just got it uh, triple sleeve because it's an awfully hot coffee pot, but I may be wrong. Is that, I know we've... I asked Dan this when he was here the other day, but we're spinning our wheels looking for... Um, Basically, the, the first good banter topic of the video. How important is your coach in college football? Because I, like... I know it's important in hockey, but it's not that important. Like, usually, the coach just gets fired because the players are doing, like, a really bad job. So, and then sometimes they get, like, a boost afterwards. The coach is just, like, the first domino to fall when your team is shit. You know, you're like, we got to get rid of this guy. College coaches are important because they have to be good talent recruiters. That makes sense. I could see that. Hey, what? Scammed? Like, I'm still just trying to figure out who to blame for Michael Penix Jr.'s collapse during the Apple Cup. I mean, I know they won the game, but it really seemed like, just for me personally, as an armchair quarterback, there were some very questionable play calls, um, you know, Washington versus Wazoo. So, like, what are we doing here? That's the offensive coordinator? You're telling me the coach doesn't even call the plays? The offensive coordinator calls the plays? Name another college football game. Um, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. I was going to say the Fiesta Bowl. It's the funniest name. I understand. Maybe you do find it funny if you watch college football, but watching a college football game like a month ago, and then like at halftime, they wheeled out like a bunch of diet Dr. Pepper bins, and then they had two college students just toss footballs into the bins for like 30 seconds. And then whoever threw the most footballs into the bin got their college education paid for. There's like two ways to look at that. One is like, what are we doing here? This is like so dystopian. The other one, I was like, man, for the kid who just got his college paid for by Diet Dr. Pepper for like 30 seconds of work, he's probably stoked, bro. <laughs> he's gonna be a customer for life. My university's going to the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Good for them, good for them. Do you, uh, do you go to um, St. Mary's University? 
Or do you go to Liberty, Liberty, Liberty? They should play... Um, I don't know. I was just going to deliberately make like a bad joke. That would be a first. I'm not taking this garbage. What do I know? They screwed the Dr. Pepper challenge up and had to pay both kids. Even better, honestly. Even better. We will be switching to Diet Dr. Pepper as a result of that. I just thought it was funny that it was like... You know, this is like a landmark moment in the lives of these... They're not even really children, you know? They were dudes that were basically in their early 20s. But literally for like the... The whole promotion boiled down to like a 30 second throwing a football competition. Like, the, if you can't see the humor in that, I don't know what to tell you. It's like... Life-changing financial payout, and it all comes down to, like, who performs better in this completely arbitrary advertisement. And I respect it. I told you, I've, I've become, begrudgingly, I've become a big America lover recently. I respect it. It's cruel. Not for the dude who won. <laughs> or the dude who came in second, who apparently also won. Now, I'll be real with you, uh, yum brands. You're not going to catch my ass buying Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm hooked up to the Coke Zero mainline right now. Really? More of a Dr. Pepper Zero aficionado? What was the one where they said, uh, it, it was like Dr. Pepper 12, right? That was like, it's not for women. One of the funniest ads of all time. Remember when Burger King tweeted? Listen, what did they say? <laughs> the tweet was not get back in the kitchen. But they did say something that was about 98% similar to that. Tell me I'm wrong. They tweeted that women belong in the kitchen. You know what they meant. <laughs> but the fact that nobody said like, hey, what are you doing with the phrasing on this one? Was like, come on, man. Or I don't know, maybe they just experienced the call of the void that day. I'm sure it happens to people all the time. What did they mean by it? Well, they were like giving away, because it was International Women's Day, right? They were giving away scholarships to like culinary college for women. I mean, usually saying someone belongs somewhere most of the time, unless you're being a real hater, that's like a positive thing. That's like one of those times where you need to make sure that you run it up the flagpole to make sure like, hey, I'm going to send this tweet out on our at Burger King account. I just want to make sure like, do you have any notes on it first? Okay, children belong in the mines would be another one that me personally, I wouldn't send out there. But in all honesty, do you ever think that um, people who work in mining get like too much credit for a, for a dangerous job? Like back in the, and by the way, I know nothing about mining or geology for that matter, or construction or really any form of engineering. This is just a joke. Like back in the, in the 30s, they were going down there with like a little Minecraft axe, right? And they were going down into the rocks, go swinging that thing around with the diamond tip. Ting, 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 ting. And yeah, like sticks of dynamite and stuff like that. Nowadays, isn't it all like robots or something like that? No, there's no shot they're using pickaxes anymore. People aren't even using pickaxes in Minecraft anymore. We're past it.
They use lasers now. They don't use a, a netherite um, drill pick. That's what I would do. A Tinker's Construction Hammer? Exactly. Or like a Thanos Infinity Glove from Thomcraft. You should try this. It's a good thing you're handsome. There's nothing else going on upstairs. People are mostly just jealous because I'm a great conversationist. Yeah, sure. You meet someone who works in the mining industry. Oh, that sounds tough. What are they going to say? Yeah, it is sometimes. Conversation dead. Me. Hey, hey, do you still use a pickaxe down there? You still swinging a pickaxe around down there or is it all like robots or something like that? We're, we're making friends or we're making enemies. We are not remaining Switzerland in any of these interactions, okay? Give me this 4.5% angel deal, you piece of crap. Let's see. Spawns a random, friendly, nobody cares. Nobody cares, Scott. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. This is the most upset I've ever been at one of your straw men. It's not a straw man. I'm literally like asking questions. You know what? Now I know something about the mining industry. People that work in it don't like questions being asked about their profession. Okay, well fucking fine. Stay down in the cave then. I was trying to, you know, shed some light on the situation, pun intended, but apparently like you got into it because you like being down in the darkness. Fair enough. You ever see the show Dirty Jobs? You know, when Mike Rowe goes to the recycling plant and he's like, you know, what do you guys do here? They don't tell him to fuck off. They give him like a little back of the napkin sort of like elevator pitch. And he's like, wow, that sounds like, you know, dirty. And they're like, yes, sir. I will reroll my entire run. That this run was going nowhere fast. He also doesn't say, isn't the danger of the job overstated? Listen, okay? I said that to get... Sometimes you don't understand the art of interviewing, okay? You give them a question where the answer is obvious, so they have something easy to answer with and educate. Some of you didn't study from the Frost v. Nixon playbook, okay? Because they need easy questions? Well, I don't know, you know, it's, nobody knows anything about mining except for people that work in the mining industry, bro. Kate takes Japanese class and this summer there was like a, they, they threw like a little party. So I don't know anybody in her Japanese class, but I went and there was a dude there who was talking about how he's like an engineer that works for junior miners, which is like a bit redundant, I suppose, uh, in BC. And he's like, yeah, you know, usually like it depends on like market conditions, but things are like uh, like it's kind of collapsed right now, like we're in a bit of a crunch. And I was asking him all sorts of questions because I don't work a real job, right? I was genuinely curious. I was like. Is the, is the success of your industry tied to like how successful your explorations are or is it tied predominantly to the like commodity price of copper? And he was like, well, you know, at the end of the day, everything comes down to the commodity price of copper. And I was like, well, it's really interesting. I didn't think about that. You know, when you watch like the news and they're like, check it out, copper went up like 4% today. I look at that and I say, like, who fucking cares? But actually, it turns out the reason it's on the news is because it has, like, a material difference for tens of thousands of people who work in the industry. It kind of, like, it tied it all together for me that we're all in it together on this third rock from the sun. So true. What can I say? 4% in a day is insane. Sorry, I'm still smoking that 2020 Zaza. We were all triple sleeved back then. 
You're not taking the item? What item? No, that item? Uh, well, you know, I'll go to, I just wanted to ponder a little bit more. Just wanted to ponder it. Thirty rock, me when I'm a rock collector. I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you credit for trying on that one. Anytime I see out of context the phrase 30 rock, for some reason it always gets Are You That Somebody by Aaliyah stuck in my head. I just hear like Timbaland in the background. 30 rock. Uh-huh. Think I really feel it. East Coast feel it. West Coast feel it. Boy. I've been watching you with the something I do and I do and the something do do do. I don't know the words very well. But I do know that she says sometimes I'm goody goody, right now I'm naughty naughty. What about Steely Dan? That's not a bad one. I'm a fool to do your 30 rock. Oh yeah. I don't want to watch your 30 rock no more. Too bad her name's Tina Fey instead of Tina Fee, because that would really fit much easier into the parody, because they already use the word fee in the song to begin with. Minus two? That's not a joke. That's just the real engineering constraint of what would have been the song parody. The walls will harden over time. Time is the essence. Can we get some, uh, can we write that down, please, chat? Can we get some Peepo G? I don't want to wash your dirty cock no more. What does that have to do with Tina Fey, bro? Now you're just being obscene. <laughs> it's just disgusting, quite frankly. Those are the cocks most in need of washing. <laughs> you play Aaliyah, I play Romeo Must Die. Okay, I play, um, that would, uh, I'm gonna give you one X on Jet Li by playing uh, the one. Then how are you gonna get out of that? You're gonna play something with Bridget Fonda, presumably? Just waiting. Single player mode. Mummy 3? Bridget Fonda's in the... Oh, no, you're going Jet Li. But then you just 2x Jet Li, bro. So I play hero and abandon you in Chinese cinema. Oh, you play Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon because it has Zhang Ziyi in it. Okay, well, um, great choice. I'm going to play... Uh, I got to think about that one. House of the Dragon? That's not what it's called. That's the HBA show. The HBO show. Curse of the Dragon Temple, something like that? I'm in trouble. House of Flying Daggers, that's what I'm looking for. Thank you, thank you. Reign of Fire? What's the connection, bro? I know everything there is to know about Reign of Fire, except who directed it. <laughs> I trap you in Hong Kong cinema with gods and gamblers. I resign and dodge your games for the rest of eternity. Honestly, I'm just going to level with you. I'm too lazy to go look for the item room. I'm not doing digital walking. I could be getting my steps up IRL. Can we get some Sine 2 Nerdle duels? I am displeased to inform you that there has been necessary maintenance to Sine 2 Nerdles. It has gone down and will return uh, on December the 18th, next Monday. So we have like a, a one week tolerance break, which is nice because you get like a little bit, you know, those are high pressure games. This is the first time I've ever had to deal with like having a 90% win rate in a competitive game. It's honestly like way more stressful to have. I, I understand Apollo a lot more genuinely. Like, it's more stressful to win 90% of the time than it is to win 50% of the time. At least, like, if people are watching you. Because if you win 50% of the time, 
when you lose, people are like, that's not like a surprise. When you win 90% of the time and you lose, people are like, what happened? You freaking suck. It's, there's ladder anxiety, it's true. No, I'd still rather win 90% of the time. There's just a little bit more pressure that comes with it. It's true, people go crazy. The allegations start flying about aging. Oh, he's slowing, he's slowing down, he's sundowning. People will say like fucked up shit to you when you're bad at a video game on Twitch. Like, I'm, I just turned 35. People will be like, oh, he has dementia. It's a fucking messed up thing to say to somebody, man. That's like if my toddler said that, I would be like, I forgive them because they don't know, like, the power of words. The people that are, like, you know, 24 years old are posting it in chat. And then when I'm like, don't say that, they're like, oh, the chat's a reflection of the streamer. And I'm like, buddy, are you... Is, is this Alan Tudyk? Is this like iRobot? Are you Chad GPT-4? You got like all the talking points in there. <laughs> CEO of having uh, no original thoughts. That's maybe a little rude, but... <laughs> it's, it's not even as rude as saying someone's losing their mind! Anyway, it's all good. Post your uh, watts per kilogram. Post your mile time. Three? Three is good. I, I'll give you some I'll give you some respect if you know your watts per kilogram. But if it's three, I'm giving you bonus respect on top. Three's pretty good. Four? If your watts per kilogram is really four, you're you're crushing it out there, keep it up. Man hates items. Can I tell you something? I thought to myself, I had an internal monologue. I said, last floor, I skipped the item room. This this floor, I absolutely have to get it or chat will be mad. And I forgot that it's uh, mom's floor. So, I'm stuck. <laughs> that one's just my bad. Twenty minute mile? Honest, if you know your mile time, that's based. I'm gonna give you the secret. If, if you ever anger slime, I'm saying this having basically never spoken to him. I, well, definitely not IRL, but barely online. If, if anyone ever asks you your mile time, but it's probably slime, the only way you lose is by refusing to answer. You win by answering, even if your time is bad. If your time is good, obviously you win. I guess you lose by lying too, but that's up to you. But even if your mile time is poor, even if it's 22 minutes, you know? As long as you post it, you put the person who asked you in a rough position, okay? Because now, they have to choose to make the decision between saying, great job, keep it up, slugger, or they're going to like shame your fitness ability, which is punching down and is not considered okay in modern society, which is probably good. So, that's, that's my little, that's a little verbal Jeet Kune Do for you. You take their energy and you you use it to neutralize them. What if they beat your time in response? Well, it shouldn't be hard if your time's like 22 minutes. That's like a, not even a brisk walking pace. It's like a leisurely walking pace. That's not the point though. Son of a gun. <laughs> I'm not reading that. I'm not reading anything about the... the Mathis core reggae rapper either. <clears throat> Wife is away on a big business trip with lots of foods she's never had before. Guess what she's gonna get? <laughs> I shouldn't have read that. I, I thought it was a real question. And then when I got to the end, I was like, it's a, it's a trap. I'm not answering that. I, I walked into your bit. 
We'll post your mile time. It's legit true, though. I know. You know it. I know it. We just can't say it. People aren't ready for it yet. One day they will be. I'm back on the, the defensive from a public relations standpoint, okay? So I can't be courting controversy like that. We gotta keep it very copacetic this week. We gotta be very friendly for the rest of the week. We can be toxic again starting on Monday. For now, we're saying to each according to their own... Wait, what is it? <laughs> You can, she can have sushi if she wants to. That's what I'm saying. And you can have sushi if you want to. Lots of people love sushi. You know why? It's delicious. I can't believe I just walked into you. You can just walk into them? Rip to the Unabomber, you would have loved the rainbow roll. It's called the roll, it's called the rainbow roll. It is the roll where you go when you dine. It's the roll called the rainbow roll. It's got salmon, tuna, and something yellow. It's the roll called the rainbow roll. You go there. <laughs> Sorry. It's a little classic uh, internet for you. I don't know if that's old YouTube. Very old YouTube. Ah, it's got... Princess Peach Mario and the Toad. It's got tuna salmon and fish roe. Yeah, that would work. You got you got to work on your flow a little bit, but uh, I've got to work on my flow, I should say. Hey, Anna, you ever been to Nobu? No. I feel like I'm walking into something because I keep people keep talking about Nobu like every stream. Is this a Ligma? Have I walked into a Ligma? No, it's just a restaurant. Oh, it's fancy sushi. Fancy sushi. Ted <laughs> Kaczynski's listed in two movies on IMDb. Could be a good trick for Cine 2 Nurdle. Bro, if you strand them in the Unabomber's cabin, honestly, I think that's like a little... That's a little BM. That's like dropping a Fred Fucks on somebody. I don't want to be that guy, you know? I, I want to... I want to be the, the endurance player of Sine 2 Nurdle. If you, I, I want to play a little defensive and like not get stuck in, you know, Hong Kong cinema or really cinema anywhere outside of the United States, including Canada. Unless I'm stranding them in Bong Cop, Bad Cop 2. But I don't, I don't, for me, the game is at its most fun when you're not trying to outthink the opponent. You're just literally, you're, like you're, um, who's the guy from Apex Legends who looks like John Travolta? Gibraltar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I want to be Gibraltar. I basically want to enter the battle and put my shield up and say, like, let's see who gets tired first. He looks nothing like Gibraltar. Bro, clearly some of you have not seen Swordfish, okay? Pull up a picture of Gibraltar and pull up a picture of John Travolta from Swordfish and then tell me that... They don't have some similarity, okay? I can do this. Holy cow, still got it? Did you see that? It's the hair? I'm telling you! What do you mean he's not beating the face blind allegations? You ever see me play uh, Barstool Daily Dozen Trivia? I'm like the only dude who's not face blind. Everybody else is like, how did you get it? I thought that was Reese Witherspoon. Bro, you thought Elizabeth Banks was Reese Witherspoon? I wouldn't admit, with a gun to my head, I wouldn't admit that. That's embarrassing.
Didn't you get Elizabeth Banks wrong? No, I got Reese Witherspoon wrong because I thought it was Elizabeth Banks. Which is why it's top of mind. <laughs> Unfortunately. Thoughts on the Raptors moving to LA next season? Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think you made it up. Toronto seems like a good market for a basketball team. They've become, you know, well-loved and supported across Canada. I don't see it happening. I mean, like, LA can barely support the Clippers, so let's not go crazy here, okay? That hit me? Caps moving is pissing me off. What do you mean the caps moving? The caps. The caps? The Washington Capitals? The Washington Commanders are moving to Virginia. The Alexandria Capitals? What's what's going Stop using these American acronyms. I don't know what the DC RVA like what who are the Caps as well? Aren't the Capitals the Commanders? Or are we not talking about the NFL? Are we talking about the Wizards? The Washington basketball team? No, the Washington Capitals are moving 3.5 miles away. Well, they're not, it's not really moving. That's like... <laughs> I mean, do you have to... I, I understand if you have to cross like an extra bridge or something, because that's where the traffic piles up, but... This guy doesn't know ball? Why no ball? People are saying the Capitals are moving. They're not really moving. Like, when I think of moving, I think of the Atlanta Thrashers moving to fucking Winnipeg. Like, they had to pack up all their shit in the pod and, and ship it across the Panama Canal, right? They're literally just getting, like, an Uber. Three and a half miles? That's nothing, bro. You could run that in, like, 80 minutes. Is that Ted uh, uh, Geonosis is doing? Sorry, I just wanted to make a Final Fantasy joke. I'm sure it's Ted Leonosis is doing, because he's the owner. Geonosis a Final Fantasy thing? Sounds like a Final Fantasy thing. Star Wars. <laughs> Whatever. The traffic's going to be hell? I know, this is an honest question. In, in D.C. and Northern Virginia, are you dealing with a, a train type situation? Like, could you just take another two stops on like the D.C. Metro? Yes. All right, then shut the fuck up. It's not that big of a deal, I think. It doesn't sound, I mean, it's if you live like right next to the stadium right now, I get it, but. DC has the worst metro in the country. Chad, is this true? I think you'd still rather have the worst metro in the country than be like the biggest metropolitan area without a metro, though. I don't know, because people, like, if you don't live in this city, you just have to hear, you have to take what people who live there as say as gospel. Like on r slash Vancouver all the time, people are always complaining about like the SkyTrain. Shit pisses me off. I'm like, the SkyTrain is fucking goaded, bro. Yes, it stops running at like 1 a.m. Like in Tokyo, it runs on... Well, no, that's not even true. In Tokyo, it stops running at like midnight or something. But anyway, I'm, a, I'm very pro SkyTrain. The people who live in a place love to complain about the place that they live in. I understand. I do it too. Like, it still doesn't make sense to me the, the amount of traffic that you get driving down Oak Street. Like, my ass is just trying to go to Costco. Nobody fucking lives here. And then my ass gets to, like, Oak and 49th or something like that, and it's bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. I'm like, bro, what's going on? It doesn't make any sense.
to get an out DPS by Meat Boy. Listen, I can only, I guess I was gonna say I can only do what the items allow me to do, but I did skip two item rooms on this run. Now you and I both know that in all likelihood there was fucking garbage inside of them. That being said, I don't have the moral high ground. I would have the moral high ground if I'd at least looked in the garbage can and been like, yep, yeah, that's garbage, but. I didn't, and now I gotta own it, so that's fine. We'll, we'll live with our mistakes. I'm gonna just instead say that I'm, I'm saying thank you, Meat Boy, for the DPS that you're giving me. And I'm gonna hope that we pick up something sick on the next floor. It takes 1.5 hours for me to get home to Richmond from downtown Vancouver after work. I hear you, brother. You know why? It's because my ass is driving to Costco. You're, we, we're mad at each other for the, like the exact same reason. My ass is like, bro, just get a job at Richmond. Your ass is like, go to Costco at any other time. And I'm like, no, this is when it's not supposed to be busy. Don't fucking kill me. You can't kill me in any way that matters. It's always busy. That's what I'm saying, but they don't want to hear it, bro. You and I know it, they don't want to hear it. I live, bitch. <sighs> Who's they? People who refuse to recognize Costco's enduring popularity. Mm, what do you got for me? Not great. Pretty bad. Why'd you leave half a heart? Um, could somebody tell them? Could somebody explain to them how this works? No? Okay, that's fine. Um, lots of people, it, people forget easily these days. It's good to stay on a half heart if you have the Polaroid. Because everything does double damage down here anyway. So, you know, two and a half HP is functionally the same as three, but you get an extra like 15 seconds of invincibility when you're one tapped because of the Polaroid clue, or the Polaroid situation, the mathematical calculation. Trust me, we figured this all out in the before times. Do not cite the old words to me, which I was there when they were written. Would you rather be Toad turning into a Goomba in the Super Mario Brothers movie or Jeff Goldblum turning into the fly? Given how things went, I would rather be Toad turning into a Goomba. Because you can come back from that. Also, like, Rip, I mean, this is kind of the point, or part of the point of the movie, but Rip, um, Jeff Goldblum. Like, if, if he knew that his machine would cross his DNA with the DNA of, like, any creature, bro would not have picked Flyaca Domestica, let's just put it that way. Dude would have gotten in there with, like, well, I don't know, <laughs> I have to think about it. I think of, like, a giraffe or something like that. Hmm. It's unfortunate. Thought we'd have a little bit more friction. A pickle. So true. OMG, he does. By the way, we're gonna die, but we're gonna come back. I don't know how we're gonna come back, but we're coming back. Like I don't. I don't know what is giving us the one up here. Let me out. Every, we've been in this position many a time before. The secret is, every room you get takes you a little closer. You might say like, oh, just give up. No, 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 this is where you need to, this is three minutes in zone four. You hold as long as you can. Realistically, you're not gonna be able to hold forever. You know, if some room is gonna get you, you're gonna respawn. 
There's a Costco. I was poisoned post. Um, maybe this is toxic. I don't believe it. I guess any food can poison you. But it's like they got industrial cookers back there making hot dogs and stuff like that. It would just... Uh, I'd be surprised. Let's put it that way. I saw it. The person was dumb. Don't worry. Well, that it goes without saying because it's on I was poisoned. <laughs> That's kind of like their whole thing, right? By the way, I'm a... Okay, you got me, kid. I'm a changed man. Remember like a couple months ago I said... I don't buy croissants at Costco anymore because I I simply, like, as a family of three, we can't eat them all before they start to go stale. I was wrong. I'm a changed man now. We bought, last Wednesday, we bought 12 croissants at Costco because they come in 12 packs, which is a little absurd to begin with. They were gone by Saturday morning. And, like, it was not a... Uh, Hey, the onk, that's pretty good. It was not a group effort. My daughter had like two and I had 10. It turns out, help. It turns out you can eat 12 croissants pretty easily in, uh, in four days. Who knew? Was it mostly Kate? No, it was zero Kate. Kate had none croissants. I had... Um, two in the morning after Peloton riding. And then I usually had like a croissant sandwich for lunch and a croissant sandwich as like a midnight snack. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I, I can't believe I found myself in this position. I also can't believe we won that one. But I was like, I should have bought two packs. Okay, slash marker me. We'll go repentance on that one. <laughs>